Hello, hello. Hello and welcome to another conversation on curiosity. Yesterday, we had a conversation about being curious, you know, where I was uh, speaking on uh, ignorance is not bliss. And so I hope that today we can continue on that conversation and move forward to breaking it down so that it can be easier and simple for people to understand. So as you are coming in and joining the conversation, leave a like and comment below where you are joining us from or where you are joining me from. And also share because there may be someone in your network that may find uh, this conversation valuable. So sharing is caring, right? And knowledge is power. So let's share. Hit the like button as you come in. Share with your network and let's uh, let's make uh, this knowledge, you know, accessible to as many people as possible. So um, ignorance is definitely not bliss, and that was. Uh, the main focus of our conversation yesterday. But today I wanted to break it a little more down into smaller pieces uh, for us to understand. And that is why the topic is um, 12 um, types of curiosity. 12 types of curiosity to help you, you know, open your mind to new ideas, new facts or new information. Uh, so that you can have a fresh um, understanding or a better perspective on things and so you can become as well a better version of yourself. And I think that curiosity plays a key role in in having new ideas and being open to new information. Because if you are not curious, then the old information that you've been sitting on is what you feed your mind with and what you will carry into the next season of your life or the new year as we're all planning for uh, 2023. So curiosity is key to doing things differently, to seeing things differently and to having new and exciting ideas. Um, curiosity is really about your ability to apply a sense of wonder, you know, like, oh, how does that work? How does this work? What is this about? What you know, things like that. It is your ability to apply a sense of wonder without which then you are stuck with all ideas and all concepts and things like that. And that is not where we want to be, right? Nobody really wants to be there. I personally don't want to be stuck with all ideas and all perspectives that are no longer serving me. So curiosity is very important. If someone says something that interests you, ask them to tell you more about it. You know, don't just assume you know or you understand. If you don't understand something you've heard or something you read or something someone said to you, ask questions about it until you understand. That is really the basis of curiosity. And that is really curiosity at a very basic level. Sometimes there can be huge in, uh, misunderstanding between uh, people communicating, but because someone is not asking for clarity or people are not willing to ask for clarity, then they end up with this huge gap of miscommunication and misunderstanding because there's really no curiosity of what did you mean by this? What did you mean by that? I did not understand this. Can you please explain? That is really curiosity. And when you do ask for clarity and ask to understand things better, then you start at a better position, you know, of understanding what the other person meant or what this was really all about. You know, every person you encounter know something you don't, right? So their interests, their hobbies, their life experiences are something you can learn from. You know, that is why some people really enjoy reading biographies because they are like, I think I can learn from this person's experiences. I think there's so much I can take from this person's experiences. So be have that mind, that open mindset, you know, that is willing to learn and ask questions without feeling 
uh, some type of way and, and things like that. When you meet someone new, even when you are interacting, you know, with someone you know very well, even someone you've always interacted with, try to learn something new about them because they are constantly evolving, right? The same person you were interacting with five years ago is not the same person you are interacting with today. So if there are changes you're noticing in them, be curious about those changes and ask questions. They have evolved, okay? What triggered this? Why did you move from this thing you believed in so much? Why don't you believe in that same thing now? So be curious about even the people you interact with and ask questions. And from that, you'll be able to make more progress. Once again, you can hit the like button as you come in and join the conversation. And you can share with your network as well, you know. Uh, speaking of curiosity, the mind is like a muscle, you know, which becomes stronger through continual exercise. So if you only exercise once a month or once a year, you, you cannot say you're exercising, right? That really does not make sense. So you need, need to constantly stretch the, your mental muscle, just like you go to the gym and you work out and you exercise constantly. You need to do the same with your mind, with your mind or with your mindset. And the best way to do that is one of the best ways to do that. You know, there are so many ways you can do that. But one of the best ways to do that is to become really curious about life, curious about your environment and all of that. So the mental exercise caused by curiosity will make your mind more and more stronger, more and more agile, more and more flexible. There are people with a very rigid mindset it's because they don't have this element of curiosity about them. I'm sure you, 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 you probably have met those people. If you have come in contact or experienced people with a very rigid mindset, you can leave a comment in, in the comment section below and let me know, you know how your experience with such a person was. Um, I can presume that it wasn't really um, a, an interesting experience to interact with someone with a very... A rigid mindset. These are people who don't uh, appreciate evolving or growing mentally or otherwise, but we don't have to stay stuck, you know, or remain in that position. It is important to develop this element of curiosity in our lives. If you hear something that doesn't sound right to you, as a curious person, ask questions when it's appropriate. Always search for ways to improve um, your way of thinking or your way of doing things, or your way of approaching certain things. Have that ability to imagine or to reimagine solutions for, your, for maybe for something you've tried solving before and it didn't work out. Don't just sit and say, well, I tried it before and it did not work out. No, try to reimagine how you can do it in a better way. Ask questions around it. You know, curiosity helps you have a fresh perspective on things. Um, the other day, I did a live video about uh, a fresh start being a mindset, not a place. When people say, I want a fresh start, they really mean, you know, maybe a place, a new environment, a new job. And they focus on all of these physical things and the geographical locations and things like that. They don't really focus about what they are holding in their mind. But a fresh start is really about mindset. Um, not a place. I already did a video on that, so I don't want to dwell too much into that. But one of the key elements of curiosity is that it helps you challenge or acknowledge the limitations of your own knowledge and your own understanding, uh, which is one of the big factors for people who are curious. You know, they, they come to that place where they agree or acknowledge, you know what, I don't know everything. And so I need to constantly evolve and learn. Personally, for me, I am at that point where I know, I don't know everything. I don't know a lot. I need, in fact, I know nothing. So I constantly need to evolve and put myself at that place where I'm curious and asking questions and learning because it's dangerous for you to sit at that place where you think you know everything, where you think you've arrived, you know. So curiosity helps you acknowledge your own limitations, your own, your own limitations of knowledge, and then seek to improve as a person. Those are some of the benefits of, uh, of curiosity. If something excites you, engage into it. Lean forward to it and find out what is this about. You know, explore it. If it's a person, lean forward and find, more, find out more about them. Th that is really the benefits of uh, 
having a curious mindset. Innovation depends and thrives on curiosity. Without curiosity, there is no innovation. Uh, progress as a people, as a species, it depends on our curiosity. I mentioned yesterday in our previous video that without curiosity as humanity, we'll probably still be stuck in a cave. <laughs> and I don't think either of us wanted to be stuck in a cave in the, 20, in the 21st century. So it is curiosity that pulled out our forefathers out of the cave. Out of the cave. And so curiosity challenges traditional ways of thinking. Don't maintain the status quo as it has been, so shall it always be. That type of mindset is dangerous, you know. You know, just let go of it, okay? So I want to quickly point out or speak on the, the 12 types of curiosity to adopt, to implement in your life so that you can have new ideas and new perspective and new facts and things. So the very first uh, type of curiosity is emotional curiosity, which was something that when it actually came to my mind, I was like, but how many of us really sit and are curious about our own emotions? How many people? Do you ever sit and ask yourself, why am I angry? Why am I happy? Why am I sad? This is a type of curiosity that will save a lot of people <laughs> if you become curious about your own emotions. I remember sometime this year, my daughter learned something in school about um, emotions. And for that week or that month, she constantly kept asking me, Mommy, what emotion are you feeling today? And that was something I would never really thought about. I was like, oh, this is interesting. And so when I spoke yesterday about curiosity and I wanted to break down so that people can really understand, I thought emotional curiosity is one of the pieces that people are missing. I definitely was missing in that, in that aspect. And so I came now to the point where I constantly asked myself, why am I feeling this emotion? You know, the other day I was uh, doing laundry. I suddenly I felt this massive anxiety out of nowhere. And I literally had to sit down and ask myself, what triggered this? Where did this come from? You know, and I think that it's a practice that we can all benefit from. When you feel something unpleasant, try to investigate where it, where it came from so that you can be able to get to the roots of it and fix it and solve it. Even a happy emotion, find yourself, why am I suddenly happy? Why am I suddenly excited? And then find out what triggered that. And then you can lean towards getting more of that feeling. We all want to be happy, right? We all want to find those moments in our life where we're like, yeah, you know, those feelings of excitement and all of that. We want to get there. So do not ignore your emotions. If you feel really terrified, if you feel really afraid, investigate, be curious about that particular emotion. If you feel suddenly joyful, investigate. Where is this coming from? And how can I get more of that? If it is a uh, emotion of fear, anger, anxiety, find out where is it coming from so that you can avoid, you know, situations that are triggering these anxieties, avoid situations that are triggering the anger, avoid situations that are triggering the fear and the doubt and all of that. But if you don't get to that place where you are really questioning and being curious about your own emotions, then you will constantly do things that are triggering these unpleasant emotions and you will miss out on things that are triggering good emotions in you. So emotional curiosity is something that is quite important for each and every one of us. This is something that I learned by accident, like I'm explaining, like I wasn't even aware. Of it. So when my daughter asked me, what emotion are you feeling today, mommy? I was like, wow, this is something to think about. And so we encourage each and everyone watching this, have that capacity to investigate your emotions. Have that, develop that capacity within you to be curious about your emotions. Don't numb them. Don't push them down. A lot of people, each emotion they feel, especially the negative emotions, right? They just want to push them like, hey, wherever you came from, just go back. I don't want to deal with you. And when you constantly do that, you prevent growth. You, you limit yourself, you know, to have an interesting relationship with yourself. So emotional curiosity, like for me, is, is the top, is top on the list. You need to be emotionally curious. Why are you feeling this way? Why are you feeling that way? 
why where did this emotion suddenly come from so i could go on and on with this particular emotion but i, I want to try as much as possible to keep it brief all right so the the next uh, curiosity is um something i call academic curiosity right it's curiosity in general is critical to your academic performance if you are in school or if you are an academician or if you are studying or whatever you're doing that has to do with academics you need to constantly be curious don't rely entirely on what the teacher said or what the textbook said or on your own ideas be curious about your academics uh, otherwise uh, you will find yourself lagging behind all right so Curiosity is one of the strongest pillars of academic success. I know that there are a lot of people on my platform that are in school that are studying. So understand that curiosity is one of the big pillars that will determine your performance in in academics. The word academic itself speaks of you know an interest in learning, an interest in evolving, and all of that. So you cannot be in academics and you are not a curious person. Then, like, just think about it. That doesn't that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> just think about it that's the it doesn't even make sense that someone is in academic or in academics and they are not curious so curiosity academic curiosity is important and the third curiosity that i uh, would want us to look at or to pay attention is attention to is um political curiosity uh, this one i'm very far behind so i'll be honest with that all right so but it's interest it's important for us to understand how politics work you know and what is necessary for us not to completely lose it i think this is tied to maybe economic curiosity as well political curiosity just have understanding on how does politics work uh because there are so many political decisions that people at the top take that affects us you know on the ground level so when you have an understanding about it even if you're not able to fix it you know you know, even if you're not able to change the political atmosphere of your environment or of your country, just having knowledge about how polit- politics work, it can relieve some of the anxiety and some of the frustrations and some of the pain you may feel about uh, political decisions that are made at the top. So I feel that political curiosity is important for you as a citizen. As a lay person, as someone on the ground, just have an understanding of it. You don't necessarily have to fix the problem, but understanding how politics work is definitely going to reduce some of the anxiety we feel or some of the frustration we feel about our political leaders. So political curiosity is something to adopt. And the next one, I think the fourth, is um, financial curiosity. This one I am still learning, okay? <laughs> I'm still learning to be financially served myself. And But here's the thing. Asking questions around money may lead to more questions, right? Um, unveiling hope, joy, fears, regrets, and things like that. If you don't ask why, money might leak out of your bank account money money may leak out of your wallet without even you realizing it you know money will drip on notice and go on notice without you paying attention and this causes damage so the sooner you ask questions around your finances the sooner you're curious about your spending the sooner you're asking uncomfortable questions around money the earlier or the better to fix, you know, some of the financial problems we are all facing. We're living in times where the inflation is high up there, food prices are high up there, everything is just skyrocketing. So we need to get very curious about our budgeting, our finances, and all of that. So financial curiosity is one way to save. In fact, it is the main way to save, right? I read something yesterday where someone was joking about... um, one of the tips about saving said the best way to save is don't go out at all. Just stay at home, lock the doors <laughs> and go hide under your bed. Because the moment you step out there, before you know, one care is gone. And I was like, this is so relatable because I'm at home and I will find myself at a grocery store or I just go to the mall to buy one thing, one item. And I will not even take 
I, I wouldn't even, most of the time, I don't even take the, the, the shopping cart, right? I just walk in and I'm like, no, I just want one thing. And before I know it, I'm coming to the till like this. I'm like, but I came here for one thing. What is this? So if you can relate to what I'm saying, leave a comment below. Because so many times I'm going to question, why are we even buying these things? Okay, I bought it because it was on special. That is so crazy. I bought it because it was on promotion. Do I really need it? Do I need this thing I just, I just bought because it was cheap? So those are some of the questions that we need to start asking when it comes to financial curiosity, right? Financial curiosity will open more doors, you know, and more opportunities. It will help you save, you know, ask yourself about the insurance or whatever you are taking. Do I really need this insurance policy? You know, I cannot even count how many times I've gotten these marketing phone calls that are selling funeral policy to me. I'm like, no, I think that's the least the least thing I'm worried about right now, like, I start planning my own funeral? No, thank you. <laughs> so, no, I don't do that. So, but you need to question these things. Whatever policy you have, policies that you, insurance policies that you have, you have that are uh, draining this money monthly out of your, your bank, ask yourself, do you really need this? Do you really need that one? Question that. You know, why do you make this purchase? Like I've just mentioned, you go into the mall or you get into a store and then suddenly you find that thing on promotion. You, When you left your house, you had no interest in that thing, but suddenly, oh, I want that, I want that. No, that is not necessary, you know. Why Why did you buy that pair of shoes? Why did you buy a house? Do you really need it? Oh, the most important one, do you really need a car? The car you're driving and you're crying every day. Oh, the fuel prices are up there. Oh my God, I cannot survive. The fuel is too expensive. Do you really need a car? That's an uncomfortable question, right? But it's an important question to ask. Do you really need to go on vacation? We are in the festive season, end of year. A lot of people are spending so much on things that they will soon regret, you know, generally like, oh, why did I get that? Why did I go on that vacation? You should ask now, do you really need a vacation? Do you really need to travel? Do you really need to spend all that money? Do you really need it? If you really need it, okay, great. But if you don't, don't get back on it. You know, asking questions about, you know, Taking responsibility for your financial choices, whether they are small or just like the grocery issue or, you know, substantial as in buying a car, asking all of this, it builds on your financial agency as you do what is best for your future. You know, you let go of blaming the system. You let go of blaming the government. You let go of blaming inflation and you start taking responsibility towards your own financial well-being by asking difficult questions by asking hard questions. Do I really need this thing? Do I really need that pair of shoe? That pair of shoe I've been dying to have. Do I really need it? Ask yourself, do you really need it? Do you really, 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 really need it? So when you ask these questions, you embrace possibilities and potential. You step, you know, move forward on your own financial journey. A lot of us are, we blame everything except ourselves. We are blaming our lack of money on inflation and the uh, high cost of living and all of that. But if we can start questioning, do we really even need these things that are so expensive? Do you even need this thing you, you want so badly that is so expensive? If you start taking that level of responsibility towards your own budgeting and don't allow everything to the government. Don't allow everything to inflation. Take some sort of responsibility. And that is really what financial curiosity is all about. Uh, the fifth uh, curiosity uh, that I listed is cultural curiosity. A lot of us deal with people from different backgrounds and cultures and on this, uh, you know, and all of that. But we don't really, we're not really curious about understanding these people. We think that the way we think and the way we see the world is the same way they think and see the world, which is not true at all. You know, when you are, when you find yourself in an environment with different cultures, it is important for you to apply cultural curiosity. It is about understanding people and learning about different cultures, learning about ideas in that culture, learning about their way of doing things so that you don't step on toes unnecessarily. You know, this is something I had to learn the hard way. <laughs> 
But I'm learning nonetheless, okay? So cultural curiosity is very important. South Africa, for example, is a very diverse uh, country with so many different cultures. So it is important for us to learn how to interact with people from different cultures. Don't assume that how you do things is how they do things. Don't assume that how you think is how he or she thinks. No. Cultural curiosity is very important. It will give you new ideas and new perspective and a glimpse into the world on how to, and, and it makes relationships easier, to be honest. So the next curiosity is professional curiosity or career curiosity. A lot of us are not asking questions about our career and about our future. This line of work in which I am, how is the future five years from now? How is the future 10 years from now or two years from now if we don't have to go that far? You know, a lot of people are not curious about their careers, about their professions, about their industry. This particular industry you are in, you know, how relevant is it still going to be in the next five to 10 years? How relevant is it still going to be, you know? Ask those type of questions about your career, about your profession. So professional um, curiosity or career curiosity will help you make better decisions about your career. Uh, professional curiosity will help you plan ahead. Um, professional curiosity will help you learn relevant skills. If you are not asking uh, uncomfortable questions about your career, you will not even know what skills are needed in this particular career or that particular career. You know, if you are not asking questions about your industry, you will not know what is changing, what is evolving, what you need to let go and what you need to gravitate towards. So career curiosity, professional curiosity is one of the key curiosities that people need to adopt and start practicing. You know, because if you just assume, OK, well, how things were working in this industry five years ago is the same way they are working in the same industry. You are terribly going to be disappointed. You know, take uh, accounting, for example. Uh, accounting used to be the thing back in the day, right? And having an accountant in the family was such a prestigious thing. But now there are soft ways that can do accounting way better than any human can. So if you are getting into the field or you are currently in the field and you are not asking yourself, how is this, how are these soft ways changing my profession, changing my industry? You will not know what to do next. You will not know what step to take next, or you will not know how to plan for yourself, you know, how to plan for your future. So it is important. Maybe you are a doctor or you are in the hospitality or in healthcare. Generally, let's just say healthcare. Maybe you are in healthcare. Ask yourself, how is the healthcare system changing, you know, and how do I need to become relevant for the healthcare system of the future? Uh, for example, when you look at my watch, there are things that my watch now can tell me that I needed a doctor before to tell me. But now I don't need a doctor for that. I can simply lock on my uh, the app on my watch and have certain information that, you know, I otherwise would not have known five years ago or 10 years ago. So it is important that we find out how the healthcare system is changing and how technology is changing these different systems and these different industries. Whatever industry you are, maybe agriculture, ask yourself, how is agriculture changing? What do I need to do differently? In fact, every industry is changing. So you need to become really curious about your profession, about your career and things like that. And the seventh, I think the number seven um, curiosity, type of curiosity that I want to touch on is relationship curiosity. I don't think there is anything that gives us as much headache as relationships. It doesn't matter whether it's romantic relationship. It doesn't matter whether it's family relationship. It doesn't matter whether it is friendship relationship. There is so much friction that we keep bumping ourselves with each other or into each other we keep bumping because we don't understand we are not curious about relationships what works and what doesn't work we are not curious about it these are lessons i'm learning you know as i am going as i'm you know so i'm just sharing some of the things that i see by myself and i ask questions why isn't this working why isn't this strategy working with my son? What do I need to do as a parent, right? Which actually I'm going to speak more on that when I come to parental um, 
uh, curiosity. But for now, the relationship in general, it's very difficult. It's one of the sources of joy for humanity. And it's also one of the big sources of stress for humanity. So we definitely need to become curious about relationships. Why does this thing not work? Why is this one working? Okay, I need to double down on what is working and I need to step back on what is not working, all right? So curiosity around relationship is going to help you build better relationships. Curiosity around relationship will help you become a better friend, a better wife, a better husband, a better girlfriend, a better boyfriend, a better parent, um, a better sister, a better brother, a better mom, a better dad. I don't know if I name everything, a better cousin. Curiosity around relationships will help you improve in all of these areas. So have some sort of curiosity around relationships. This thing I heard from this relationship guru, is it really true? Does it really work? Is it really applicable? If it's not applicable, leave it alone. Don't go and apply it in your life and cause chaos in your life simply because some relationship guru said, this works. People are different, okay? What works for A is not going to work for B. What works for the other person is not going to work for the other person. So as you interact with people, understand what works for that particular individual. How do you understand by being curious, by asking questions, asking questions about them, what they like, what they don't like, you know, asking questions about the relationship in general. So become curious and treat people as individuals. Do not box anyone. That is where friction comes, where we try to box people. If you had a negative um, experience in the past with someone, when you meet someone new, don't put that on them. They are not the person you were dealing with in the past, whether they are your friend or something else. All right? So learn to deal with people as individuals and be curious. Be curious. Relationship curiosity will cure Many of the headaches that we constantly experience um, as we interact with each other. All right. So now that leads me to the next point, parental uh, curiosity. As a parent, I think that uh, so many of the world's problems will also be solved if we are curious enough about parenting. Actually, I think that to be a parent, there should have been some institution where people go and apply. <laughs> And they assess them if they qualify to be parents. But no, anybody can just get them in the morning and pop a baby. And then they have no clue how to raise this child. I certainly, it's a process that took me by surprise. But I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm like, oh my God, I'm learning. I have no clue what I'm doing. Sometimes I tell my kids, listen, I have no clue what I'm doing, okay? I'm learning as I'm going. A few years ago, you were a baby. Now... Suddenly you're a teenager, like, how, how do I do? Like, anyway, I'm sure some of the parents watching understand what I'm saying, right? So parental curiosity is very important because when kids are raised in an unhealthy, broken environment, this carries on into their adulthood. So it is very important to ask yourself as a parent, what do I need to do better from what my own parents did? Those are some of the questions I've been asking myself. I know the environment I grew up in, and I'm like, how do I do? How do I become a better parent? I'm not asking for perfection, okay? I'm not asking anyone to become a perfect parent. I definitely am not a perfect parent, but I am very curious about parenting. I know that I've made tons of mistakes already as a parent, all right? But I'm like, how can I improve? How can I become better? So parental curiosity is one of the key areas that I'm really working on because I'm like, I don't want to raise broken kids, all right? And I know that I've, some damage has been done. But I'm like, no, I want to see how I can fix it before they get to a certain age, all right? I make mistakes and I openly, we talk about it. Even though they are just kids, I'm like, hey, we need to talk. I think mommy missed up there. And so... To create that safe space for them where we can constantly talk and share. So that's some of the areas that myself, I'm still a work in progress. And I'm sharing uh, with my community, have parental curiosity. Don't just go through, you know, applying the same principles that you saw from your parents without questioning them. Why did my fa Why does my family do this? And why am I so uncomfortable with this thing my family does? Do I want to pass this to the next generation? That level of curiosity will make you correct a lot of things. 
do, do I want this particular thing I saw from my mom or from my dad to be passed on to my kids? In fact, do I want this same attribute about myself that I don't like? Do I want it to be passed to my daughter or to my son? These are the type of curious or curiosity and uncomfortable questions that will fix a lot of things in society. If kids are raised in a healthy environment, society will become healthy in a much bigger way, you know, better way than any school system can fix, than any policies can fix. There are a lot of uh, things calling on the government to do this, to do that, but some of it needs to start at home, okay? And it cannot happen if parents, us as parents, are not curious about parenting and what we can do different and what we can do better or how we can do it better. Okay, we need to understand our kids, that they are human beings, as small as they are. These are little human beings with feelings and all of that. We need to understand childhood trauma. How did it impact you? These are some of the like forbidden words we shouldn't talk about, especially in the black community. <laughs> childhood trauma, what is that? When you are curious about that, understanding your own trauma and being careful not to pass that to your kids, not to pass that to the next generation is very important. So parental curiosity, that is why I had to separate it. I had to separate it from relationship curiosity in general because I think that this is really very important. And so, yeah, I would leave it at that. So number nine, I think we're almost there. Number nine, um, Curiosity is technological curiosity. I think I've spoken so much about this in some of my talks, uh, but I feel like I still need to touch about it, right? You need to understand how technology is changing the world. You need to understand uh, the basics of or the impact of technology uh, in the world or in your own life or in your work. Uh, and all of that, it's very important. Don't, don't, don't apply that mindset of, oh, well, I would just go, you know, and see how things work out. I would just bury my head in the sand and maybe this thing will all blow over. No, it's not. There are new emerging technologies that are coming up that are really scary, that are going to up, up affect everyone. The new one, I think, is Open AI GPT, something around that. You need to look into that, all right? Be curious about these new technologies that are coming up and how they are going to impact you how they're going to impact your children, especially, right? So become curious about these things. Don't say, well, I'm not in the tech industry. I am not an IT technician. I'm not a tech guru. I'm not a tech expert. So I don't have to become curious about technology. If you do not become curious about technology, you are going to be disrupted, right? For those who have read my book, Disrupt Yourself or Be Disrupted. Oh, it looks upside down. I don't know. So for those who have read my book, you know that I'm very passionate about this. You have to disrupt yourself or you will get dis disrupted because there is no neutral ground. And the fastest way for you to get disrupted is to become passive about technology, is to become neutral about technology, is to say, well, it's not for me. That is dangerous. That's the dangerous way of approaching the 21st century. That's the dangerous way of living in the digital area to say, no, I'm not a tech guy. No. The conversations around technology nowadays is not only reserved for tech experts. Everyone breathing, if you are breathing, if you have a pause, you need to sit up and start being curious about technology because it's affecting each and every one of us. Tech is affecting everyone, everyone. It's affecting how you communicate with people. It's affecting how relationships are carried out, how they are done. It is affecting how work is done. It is affecting everything, like really everything. So you don't necessarily have to be a tech guy or uh, an IT person to pay attention to technology. No, you just need to understand that this is coming for you <laughs> and you need to sit up. Okay, so technological curiosity is key. It's key. Number 10 or number 11, I lost count, is business curiosity, right? Maybe as the new year is starting, you are like, I think I want to start a business. I think I want to get into business. I think I want to quit my job and get into business and all of that. But be curious about what type of business you're getting into. How does the business world function? You cannot transition into the business world with the mindset of a nine to five. That is dangerous. 
So you need to become curious. How do business people survive? How do people start businesses? How can I bootstrap myself if I'm going to get into business? Okay. All of those questions, that, that type of curiosity will help prepare you for whatever business you are stepping into or whatever business you are interested in getting into. Don't jump into it blindly without asking questions, without doing your due diligence, right? Because it is from the business curiosity that you'll be able to find what is appropriate for you and or step into what is appropriate for you. So it is important that you apply some level of curiosity or business curiosity as you, whoever is planning, listening to me. If you're listening to me and you want to get into business, you want to transition from the nine to five into business, starting your own thing, you need to apply a sense of business curiosity and ask uncomfortable questions. Ask the right questions as you step in. It's because it's a completely different environment with a completely different mindset, okay? If you apply the mindset of nine to five in the business world, you will be destroyed. <laughs> you are going to be crushed. Okay. And number 11, like I told you, I think I lost count, is intellectual curiosity, right? And um, this actually is like the embodiment of all of the curiosities that I've been speaking about, intellectual curiosity, right? Because it really has to start here, in your intellect, in your mind. You know, intellectual people are, are always curious people. You cannot find someone who is really intelligent or an intellectual who is lacking curiosity. No, it does not happen that way. Intellectual curiosity is the desire to learn more about the world. It's their desire to understand the world. It is your desire to find deep answers to questions. It's your desire as well to ask deep questions without being afraid. That is what intellectual curiosity is about and like I mentioned it is the embodiment of all of the curiosities that I have spoken about okay uh, intellectual curiosity is your desire to learn more um, and explore systems as well you are in your your desire to you know be adventurous as well um it is your desire to just have a deep understanding about certain things. You are not a shallow person. Like inter intellectual curiosity, is you cannot do it at a shallow level. If you're a shallow person, okay, then yeah, that's something else, a conversation for a different day. But intellectual curiosity is an embodiment of everything we have been talking about. And lastly, as much as I am an advocate for curiosity, I will also have to emphasize that you mind your business. <laughs> there are people that lack all of the curiosity that I have mentioned, right? They have no interest in all of these types of curiosities I have mentioned, but there are these people that have one interest. They want to know what is going on in everybody's life. They are so nosy. Think about it. I'm sure you might have experienced someone like that. Let me know in the comment section, okay? There are people that have no interest in curiosity that we add value to themselves, but they want to know what is happening in everybody's life. Gossip. Asking things that you have no business asking. Finding out, oh, when are you getting married? Is that any of your business? <laughs> when are you having a baby? Is that any of your business? That's the type of Curiosity that you should not apply yourself to, okay? <laughs> That's the type of curiosity we should stay away from. Stay out of people's business. Who are you dating? Hmm? Who is your whatever? Like, you know, how much do you earn? How much? No. What's your salary? None of your business. <laughs> you understand what I mean, right? What happened in your relationship? Why did you break up? Unless they want to share, it's really none of your business. You know, why did you gain so much weight? Or why did you lose so much weight? Wait, unless they want to know, it's really, I mean, unless these individuals, they want to share their story, it's really none of your business. So try as much as possible to stay out of this type of curiosity, right? Where these are things that will add no value to your life. 
really eventually so focus on what adds value and mind your business which is my last point and understand that being curious in the healthy way will actually give you more ideas new ideas will open your mind to new facts and will open your mind to more information to make better decisions about your own future so focus on what adds value don't be a nosy person who at the end of the day really gains nothing all is that okay now you know about what is happening in that individual's life but at the end of the day what do you gain from that nothing so thank you all for being here i really wanted to keep this short but i'm not sure i achieved my goal so hopefully we'll carry on uh with more interesting conversations uh soon uh, a big thank you for everyone that has been watching and for those who watch the replay i leave a comment and let me know which was the highlight of this conversation which type of curiosity are you really going to grab and run with it you're going to take hold of and like oh I I haven't really thought about this. So let me know which moment or which type of curiosity really stood out for you. Share your thoughts in the comment section below and I look forward to having another conversation with you soon. Thank you.